Hey guys, this is a quick intro to NovelAI.net. Um, it's an AI text generation tool, which will take your writing prompts and a dictionary of context information and automatically generate texts like a book or a text adventure, depending on how you want to use it. Um, I have a file that I prepared with Pokes' uh, adventure. It's got Bandolin campaign setting for Dungeons and Dragons. So it's got all of the sort of world information about people and places and things in that setting. And uh, you can take that file and you can import it and should be able to have a playable text adventure immediately. Or if you want to write books with it, fiction with it, you could use it for that purpose too. So when you get to NovelAI.net, this is the homepage. You can go to the free account and you'll get a limited amount of trial text generations, like 50 of them. Um, it is a paid service because the AI model is very computationally intensive and takes a lot of hardware. So if uh, you get into it, definitely please support them. That's a pretty cool thing. And it's constantly being improved where they're training new and better AI models all the time. So that's where the money is. Anyway, uh, you don't have to do the tutorial, but they are pretty useful if you're uh, not clear about anything after this video. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and skip right to uh, the main menu and import the file, which is Toast's campaign setting file, which is on the Discord. And so this campaign file has basically just, again, his entire PDF campaign manual, plus a lot of things that we fleshed out through the various sessions we've had at the virtual tabletop. and. Uh, a lot of stuff from the map and just talking directly. So it should be a pretty good representation of Bandolin. So it starts pre-configured with a writing prompt, which is this block up here, which is basically the uh, lead into the start of the first session, straight out of Horses campaign manual, where you're heading to Domina to take part in the Galax Melee. So um, it's written so that it is not as a group because this is a single player thing, but um, you can take this prompt and you can edit it however you want to, to make it a group of people or start somewhere completely different in the world, like Inara or Vectis or Toral, um, any of those random locations from the campaign setting PDF, check that out and you can kind of basically define who you are and where you are at the start and just take that with that. But, Right now, I'll just run with the existing prompt. So I've walked into Domina, and there's down here in this text adventure mode, there's three options. You can do something, you can say something, or you can just directly edit the story. Uh, normally, what I would do is directly edit the story because you can see like, the most control over the writing style and the action. But I'm just going to say, I take a look around the crowded street. So this will switch that to second person because the model's noticed, well, the model that I'm using right now is the text adventure model, which is trained on second person. So it rephrase that to you take a look around a crowded street and inserts that into the story. And then based off of that, uh, it generates a sort of response based about what it knows about the world and um, setting. So it knows that it's a fantasy setting. So armor and trinkets and weapons are prominently mentioned. Um, could have been something else. So if you don't like what it gave you on a first pass, just click the retry button and it will come up with some other sort of response to your text. And so now we've got crowds with colorful costumes filled with people ready to shoot around the combatants. This is more of a celebratory thing, but uh, you can see the writing just changes from retry to retry. So you can, you can take that and run with it and sort of respond to it. Like, I guess there's farmers, priests, and mages in this case. And I will take a look at one of the mages in particular. We need some more context probably about that. So it's pulling stuff in from the dictionaries that I've basically created with all of Pose's location. So as far as Zemnia Shem mentioned here, um, it's not really 
going to fully understand the world because it can only sort of maintain a few things in memory at once, which are sort of um, brought into memory based off of keywords. So I uh, mentioned things like Bandolin, it will insert like this text saying Bandolin's continents are amorous and Boraz, and there may be others, but they haven't been discovered yet. Um, so basically every time you type something or even it replies to your typing, it will search that string of text and find keywords in there and use that to look up dictionary entries from the lore book that I've said. So I've got 180 locations in here to find where they are and like relative directions to other locations nearby so that you should be able to sort of explore and walk around the world and it should be consistent with the map. And the people are also defined, so you might run into some characters you recognize, like uh, the emperor artists of the Zemlian Empire or Brenna, the comment members of the Council of Mages. So all their descriptions are in here and it can take that and work with it. Um, so you can just sort of play it like a game like this. Uh, just do whatever you want to do. So I need to walk down the street. And try to run into somebody that the conversation with. And then switch to the sake man, and the sake man is just like you want to have a conversation. So I'll say yes. And that'll enter into a conversation with this random NPC that is basically just a generator, a flag. Um, and in this third command story, it's like you are just directly appending to this text. So instead of me talking here, this is mid sentence. You'll see that there's no closing quotation mark. So you can just say what he says if you want control over the story like that, which is sort of a good way to keep things moving in the direction that you want them to move or whatever plot you have in mind for your adventure. And so you can directly edit stuff. So you can also take what it's auto-generated and modify it. So instead of this guy being named Lyle, I'm going to call him Carl instead. And so you just basically use the like, text editor directly and you can change stuff. So that's the sort of basic premise of it. Um, other things you should know to start uh, these Blocks over here on the right hand side are pretty important. So the memory is basically sort of big picture. Uh, I've heard people describe it as like the back of the cover sort of description of the story. So what you want to put in memory is stuff about like who you are, what your sort of overarching motivations are, what direction you want the plot to move in. So like if you have some sort of uh, major villain that you'd want to be uh, struggling against, you put information about them here. And then author's note is much more sort of uh, directly related to the current scene. So it's like active, important things like you are in the marketplace or it is nighttime if that's important for whatever is going on. Like you don't want to be able to see very far. Uh, stuff that is immediately relevant should go into author's note because the way that that all works is here in the advanced tab, you can see what it brings into memory. And you'll see that the um, memory, the first section is up here at the top, which is to the parser. It's like the furthest back thing. So it's like the least fresh in its memory, so to speak. Whereas the uh, author's note is all the way up here near the front of the text embedded um, so that it's very, very fresh in the AI's mind, so to speak. And so it will lean more heavily on stuff that's more recent because it wants things to be 
contiguous, right? Like you shouldn't like pull stuff from a scene that's just ended like up here when you have new stuff going on down here. So it always leans more heavily on more recent sex. So the author's note is given like a very high priority position in the memory so that it keeps things sort of focused about like what should be immediately taking place. Uh, that said, like you don't need to say everything that's going on in memory. Like you're, if you're in combat, um, it will be able to derive that from just the natural flow of the story. You don't need to put that you're in combat into this block necessarily, unless uh, unless you're in like a really long fight or something, and you're sort of in and out of combat, and stuff might cycle out of memory. Like it, you might have like a long conversation with somebody in the middle of a battle or something, and you don't want them. The AI to forget that there's a battle going on. Uh, that's that's the purpose of the author's note is to keep things sort of grounded and focused on the current action, so to speak. So you'll want to constantly keep that author's note up to date, like as you move from say the inn to the Coliseum or something like that, and let the AI know where you're at at all times so that it can remember that in case like. There is a long conversation or a long action sequence where the location isn't mentioned for quite some time. Uh, that's how it will be able to remember it because otherwise it would cycle out of the history. So that's the purpose of the author's note. And again, the purpose of memory is just keep things sort of big picture moving in the direction that they should be moving. So like over multiple days of the story, that's the sort of stuff that people enter in memory. And then the third like class of context information is that lore book, which you can see down here is the book icon. So as you meet people, like I just met Carl, one of the mages of Amherst's local representatives, um, you probably want to add more people or more locations as you discover them to the lore book because Carl might go away. He, he might go off on his own for a while, but you want to remember him so that when he shows up again, the AI remembers that He's from the mages of Amorites and he's one of the local representatives. So the way that you do that in this lore book entry, like I just did, is with this plus icon. Uh, I've got stuff grouped into folders basically by types of object, but uh, you can lay out however you want to lay it out. Um, it does get quite cumbersome uh, if you have a number of entries like I do. So it helps to lean pretty heavily on this uh, autocomplete up here and search for things filter all these lists and find just Carl's entry and all 500 or whatever entries I have at this point. Um, but that, that's basically how the AI works is it looks up things using these keys. So it will try to match basically the string Carl against any entry in the lore book and then pull that block of text from here into the context we saw earlier. So now that I have this entry for Carl, if I go back and go back to the context, uh, it might actually have that. Yeah, so here, Carl is one of the mages of Amaris's local representatives. And this isn't coming from the story, it's coming from the lore book, plus the brackets around it, which says it's not part of the story, basically. Uh, and the reason why it's it's in memory is if you click on this section, it will tell you from here, it found key Carl in the text. So that's why it got added. And I think, but don't know, I think that these are sort of brought in in like the order of most recent, which is why Carl is all the way down here because he was one of the most recent things to be mentioned. Whereas Fandolin was mentioned pretty early on, I think like probably in the opening blur, I can't remember. Um, anyway, it only had so much space to bring in that is limited to 2048 tokens, so you can see I'm already at 1947. So as this story goes on, stuff will very quickly cycle out of memory. And that's that's basically why you need to have these lore book entries set up is so that you can recall information that's otherwise cycled out of that um, history of the story. Uh, <clears throat> so those are the basics. Um, other things you might want to know uh, is you don't have to play it like a game. You can write it like a story. In fact, that's what Novel AI is built to do. This text adventure thing is a sort of recent introduction to Novel AI. Um, but by default, 
it is a story writing tool. And so there's a bunch of other AI models you can choose from instead of the text adventure module, which I had selected by default for this story. I will go to cross genre because I think what I've heard that's the sort of most well trained one because it's trained on everything basically, whereas these other styles are trained on specific authors. Like there's models trained on Lovecraft and Poe and Conan Doyle. Um, but cross genre, I think, is trained on all of them combined. So it's got the most knowledge, I think, of language of anything. So you can switch to that, and then you'll immediately see that the interface changes because it's no longer text adventure mode. That sort of do say story set of options is tied to text adventure mode. In story writing mode, it's just a word processor, more or less. So you're directly editing the center pane. So you'd be typing, but you can type like your. Um, like you're the character still, so you just say. So now I'm going to just say things through typing that I say them, and stuff will just flow the same way as if I had said it through the text adventure tool. So you can still play it like a game if you want to do that. Um, so other than that, um, this is all second person because that's the way that I set up the prompt. Um, you can very easily change this to third person if you want to write a book instead of playing a game by clearing the whole prompt, which you can do at any time, and say, now you want to be talking about um, mage. And it's all core. In the city. Pachata. Is thirteen or dimension like that, and this is a completely different story now since I've cleared the entire con context. Um, but again, it still has the same lore book that I set up for this story, so it knows that the shadow was destroyed. Cataclysm is why it knows that. Because Shada is a droid ancient city on Shem, located on Kesh, under a volcano, which may have erupted a long time ago. It used to be called the Shiny City, and it knows all that because it's talking for a But now that now this is a book that is in third person and no longer like you doing things, but a character named Rizalcor or whoever else he's with in some other city on the other side of the world and you can just if you want if you ever lack for inspiration you can just keep on the ai talk on its own by just keep clicking the send button that's another thing you can do if you like the direction it's going you don't need to sort of guide it by giving it input it will it will be able to carry forward on its own it can get stuck in loops though and sort of needs your guidance to change scenes sometimes in my experience but otherwise you can basically just let it let it write a whole book by itself by occasionally just interjecting to add some words and change the things going on when you need to. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's all I think you need to get started. Other things, uh, Uterp is the best AI model it just came out. Figured it was pretty good, but Uterp's like a much larger vocabulary and better understanding language than Sigurd had. Uh, so I wouldn't change that, although if you do get into this and you want to pay to continue to use it, UTERP is an uh, advanced feature, so you have to pay like the $15 a month subscription. I think you'll get the Sigurd and Genji models with the $5 a month subscription if I recall. And on this last tab that I didn't touch yet, um, there is a config preset, which will sort of change some things about the style of the writing. So the default is Genesis, which is very sort of terse and uh, unemotional, sort of fact-based statements about goings on. I don't really like it for fantasy stuff for obvious reasons. Um, so I've got all nighters selected, but these uh, different Options here will basically just control how sort of emotive and flavorful and 
poetic the writing is versus um, just statements of fact. So you can change these and sort of um, pick and choose which ones you feel are appropriate, maybe even for different scenes. You could change back and forth. It doesn't really matter. You can just change them on the fly. Uh, and they basically just control these sliders. So if you don't like any of the presets, you can play around with these, but you really need to understand AI language training if you're going to touch them because those are really sensitive sliders and can cause things to quickly become uh, basically just gibberish or uh, ridiculous uh, statements about things that don't logically tie to previous statements. So uh, I, I would probably touch these and we'll see good, good recommendations from Reddit or somewhere, but they do exist and that's pretty much it. So good luck and let me know if you have any questions.